What is up there SEO pros? Welcome back. Today we're going to be covering the top 10 SEO tools known to existence. These are them, Ahrefs, Screaming Frog, Quora, KW Finder, Google Analytics, Search Console, Structured Data Testing Tool, GT Metrics, Google Sheets, and your own mind. I'm going to be going over every single one of these in a second. Before I do so, if you aren't in the SEO group that we have over here, I suggest you join it. It's on Facebook. It's called the White Hat SEO Network. Let's just dive into it. So we got Ahrefs. So Ahrefs is a tool that lets you analyze links and competitor domains and does a lot, a lot of other stuff too, but it's best known for the ability to analyze uh, websites links based off authority. What I mainly use it for is for checking out websites links and uh, what they're ranking for. So if I type in something like chasereiner.com on Ahrefs, and I go and look at the organic keywords, I can see everything that this page, uh, that this website's ranking for. So <clears throat> the coolest part about this is I have the ability to just export all of these keywords and plug them directly into a Google Drive spreadsheet and then compare those keywords to what competitors are ranking for. Uh, so you would literally just create a new spreadsheet, go to Google Sheets, take the keywords in here, you would filter by the amount of estimated traffic that um, Ahrefs thinks that the site's receiving uh, based on these keywords <coughs> and where the website's ranking for the keywords. And you would combine volume of the keywords, uh, basically the keyword search rate, if I can bring it over. Uh, sorry, it's locked right now. I'm used to using Adobe, uh, what is it called? Uh, Apache. So what you would do is you would you would bring this over if you can figure out how to friggin format it over um, and then you would put the keyword next to the URL next to the volume. I'll just take it like that and then bring it over like this. <clears throat> so we would take the volume like this and then sorry I forgot to get the URL grab the URL. There we go and you're gonna take that and put that over here and then when we get the other key uh, the other export so say for instance we wanted to export backlinko.com we could then take all of the keywords that he's ranking for do the same thing export them grab those and then you would just do the same thing copy all of these And then what's going to be what you're going to be able to do with all of this is you're going to be able to start looking at what these people are ranking for and what pages they're making around this stuff. So the cool thing about that is you can see what's occurring across these different uh, places. So if I type in white hat SEO, whoops, if I do a command F and I type in or control F and I type in white hat SEO, I'm going to see that this website's ranking for this, but so is backlinko and you can see the page that he's ranking. So you can start comparing pages and seeing what pages you can create. There's just a ton of stuff. So that's just one feature of Ahrefs. Uh, like I said, there's other features as well. Like uh, you can see the you know estimated authority of a web page and the estimated authority of a domain. You can export backlinks as well. Um, they're also introducing this new these new things like site auditing and Content Explorer. I don't really use those. I usually just use it for the ability to export really uh, accurate data around organic traffic and backlinks. All right, so number two we got, uh, let me get out of here. Number two we got Screaming Frog. Now Screaming Frog is a software that lets you audit websites. This is what I use in all of my site audits and I combine this with an audit spreadsheet which I will leave a link in the description. Uh, basically what you do is you open up Screaming Frog and it's free for the first 500 URLs. Um, if you're gonna be crawling anything over that, you're gonna need to get the pro version which I think is like $180 or something a year which is totally worth it because you could make that back in one audit. And what you do is you plug in a website to Screaming Frog and then you start pulling the data that it's showing you and plugging it into a spreadsheet. So I'll show you. So we're gonna open this up, let it load. And while it's loading, we'll go over to our uh, roadmap template. So 
So here's our roadmap. And so say for instance we wanted to crawl our own website, chaserunner.com. Press start, it'll start crawling. And also within here you can do exports. So you can export, you know, what were all these different pages. So say for instance we went to the sidebar and we found a bunch of errors, like say for instance there's a bunch of 404 errors on the website, or say we were missing page titles. So what you can do, and the reason why I don't have the pro on this uh, computer is because I just bought this one. I was using a Mac before. Um, but you could take all of the uh, page titles that are like duplicates and you can actually export those. Um, and I think actually in order to export, you actually have to have the pro version, unfortunately. Um, either that or it's loading. But yeah, so you would, you would take like, um, say for instance, all the page titles being duplicates and then you would go into like the on page site wide on page issues and you would say oh yeah you know the well we'd have to actually have to add that in there let's see we'd go title tag duplicates oops did i just mess that up so go here insert one below boom and um if you guys want a tutorial on how to use this roadmap template like it looks a little confusing right now uh, there's a tutorial at the top of this that shows you how to use it as well as um, tutorials on how to identify the different issues in this roadmap like for instance whether or not a site redirects to you know preferred version and actually how to fix those things as well all right so number three we got Cora uh, so Cora is a software that lets you run scans on a um, uh, on Google so you can actually see whether or not um, there are certain ranking factors well there is sorry I'm having a hard time explaining this Cora gives you the ability to scan keywords on Google <laughs> Cora tampons what the hell um, and actually see what the different ranking factors are based on what's already ranking um, on Google so if that sounded complicated it's because it kind of is but I'll show you what an export looks like so you so you run Core and what it does is it uh, it'll spit out this roadmap and it'll say these are all the things that you need to fix in order to rank for a certain keyword. If you guys want to see how um, Cora works in like better detail, I will leave a link in the description of me running Cora and showing you how to use it. Um, <clears throat> but for correlation data and figuring out what user intent, user experience should be based on a keyword. Uh, Cora is really awesome. Cora review. And I would say it's probably one of the best SEO checkers uh, for keywords on the, on the uh, market right now. I don't know why I can't find this. SEO Cora review. There we go. Eight. And there is a discount code in here as well. All right, number four, we got KW Finder. Now, KW Finder is a keyword research tool, and I like it because the uh, estimated difficulty rating on KW Finder is really accurate. So, say for instance, we went here and we typed in SEO 2018, or let's say, let's say White Hat SEO, and we wanted to get the difficulty metrics off for that keyword. Sorry, I mistyped it. You can see here it says 56 keyword difficulty. Now this is pretty accurate. This is actually really hard to rank for. I'm actually ranking for it right now, uh, right here on eighth position with a you know very low competitive domain um, and page authority. But that's because I was able to understand the user intent. And this was actually after I optimized the page with Cora. So uh, I really like this tool. It's really great for not just keyword ideas, but for like I said, the estimated difficulty rating. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to number five. So number five is Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics, for those of you who don't know, is a um, app you can pretty much put on your website. This is kind of weird, redirecting Google Analytics. I don't know why Google's indexing that title tag, um, which lets you measure traffic and user data for the people who are going to your website. And it looks like Google is just like totally messing up with its products right now. I don't know why. <coughs> uh, but more importantly, it lets you do conversion tracking. So the reason why conversion tracking is so important is because you want to be able to tie direct values to what you're doing. 
Um, if you guys don't know how to do conversion tracking, I'll also leave a link for that in the uh, description. Conversion tracking online. And I'll show you how to, and you can see how to do online and offline conversion tracking. Um, because it's also important to be able to track calls and tie uh, value to that, especially if you're going to be doing SEO for your clients. So we'll go down there, put that here. Whoops. And actually, for a lot of these tools, I I do have discounts. I just have to go get them. Um, unfortunately, I am just too lazy to go follow up with the companies that want to give me discount codes for this stuff. But KW Finder said they would give me like a 20% discount code if I just hit them up. Okay, so yeah, other than that, um, the things that I mainly use analytics for is but is for looking at like um, all traffic being able to see how much traffic I get day by day and like every month. So if I go to just today, I can see, oh yeah, I got 11 visits from Google already. If I go to yesterday, I can see I got, or sorry, this is a different website. Let me go, let me go to our website. So we go back to acquisition, all traffic, source medium. And then as I was saying before, I can see yesterday and today, how much traffic we're getting. Gosh darn it. <clears throat> so this is yesterday. So we got 130 visits off of Google. We can see how many people who hit the website then bounced off. Uh, average pages per session, average session duration. Um, how many people opted into the email. And then also I can see like certain things like what the audience looks like, like the demographics, like the age and the gender. Um, interest. I mean, there's tons of stuff that you can do in Google Analytics, but mo most importantly, like I said, is being able to see the traffic that's coming in, who's converting, and um, being able to see certain like issues, like if your site load time is really you know, terrible, that kind of thing. Cool. So next we got Search Console. Now, I almost like Search Console more than Analytics. The only reason I really like Analytics is for conversion tracking, but Search Console lets you... Um, see actually what keywords you're getting hits for based on the traffic you're getting. So if we go to chasetrainer.com and then we go to Google Analytics, or sorry, Search Analytics, we can actually see, oh, we're getting, you know, say for instance, we wanted to go to look at a certain page, say we want to look at um, our link building page and then look at the queries that it's ranking for. We can see that in the last 90 days, it's gotten 71 clicks for link building 2018 with an average position of 6.8. So it's really valuable to be able to see this data, even more so in my opinion than being able to see the Google Analytics data because you can actually see um, this stuff within Google Analytics unless, unless you link Search Console. But even then it's kind of limited. So the reason why I use Search Console is so that I can look at like what's ranking, what the average position is for these different keywords. And then I can just simply figure out how to um, rank these pages higher based off like a core scan or relaunching the content or whatever it is. Um, there's other things I can do as well, like you know, look at certain keywords, see what the click-through rates are for these keywords, 6.4% you can see, and then see if I can raise that by, uh, by adding like qualifiers or different things into the title tags, meta descriptions, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that's great about Search Console is it lets you see like if there's any manual penalties or problems going on with your website. It lets you see if there's any crawl errors. Um, if you need to index a site, or a, you know, a new web page because you just put a new one up. You can fetch new pages and get them indexed quickly. So Search Console is really sick, and if you don't have that set up, you know you really should. All right. So number seven, we got the structured data testing tool. So for those of you who don't use schema markup, you really should start. And it's not like a lot of people make it really complicated, but it really shouldn't be. Um, what schema markup is, is it's a markup language that lets you uh, identify to the different major search engines like Google, uh, Bing, Yahoo, if anybody uses that, um, the, what your web page is about. So say for instance you have a local business, um, you want to use local business markup for your home page to show Google that that's a local business page. So if you're confused on how to do that, you could literally just type in local business markup click on Google on the you know schema markup library scroll down and then it'll give you an example of different types of local businesses so you could like literally just take this right here 
get JSON LD. I don't use microdata because that you have to embed on your site and it shows. JSON LD just goes in the header of your websites and you literally just copy this into the header of the page and now you have that page marked up. Um, so the way you test whether or not that works is you would just go to structured data testing tool. Oops, I don't know how those just all open. Testing tool, click on it. And then you would just run whatever website you wanna run through here. Now we're using Squarespace so we have problems with their schema because freaking Squarespace is like Apple and it doesn't respect its users freedom. Um, because there's no reason we should have local business and organization markup on a home page. There should just be one or the other. But um, as you can see, uh, this is what the schema markup looks on a web page, like on a web page. And there's a bunch of stuff you can mark up. Um, you can mark up contact pages, about us pages, product pages, service pages, tons of stuff. All right. So number uh, eight is GT metrics. So we talked a little bit about page speed earlier. Um, obviously, we want to provide the best UX possible for our site visitors. So what we will do for that is we'll make sure that the site loads fast by going to GT metrics, typing in a domain name, and then seeing uh, the result scan and what we can do to fix the load times. Um, most of you guys probably already know how to use page speed tools, um, but I guess the tip uh, to go with GT metrics is just make sure your site loads fast. It doesn't really matter what tool you use. Just make sure that you're like compressing your images, um, doing the best you can to get this under a two second load time. Now you can see this at 4.1 second. Um, it's still better than most websites in my opinion. Uh, and we're rocking Squarespace, which is like, <clears throat> it's hard to do page speed optimization on Squarespace when, like I said, it, uh, you know, the content management system doesn't respect its user's freedom very well. Um, so number nine is Google Sheets. Now I use the hell out of Google Sheets. Um, I have a bunch of templates that I follow like web design template, SEO road, roadmap template, Facebook template. And then we have our own internal like agency workflow, which you can download all of these templates. I will leave a link in the description as well. If you want to join the mastermind group, which has um, all of my templates uh, updated every month. And uh, here I can show you. And then you would just click on the pinned post with the different agency templates in here. Um, if you do want to get into this, it is a monthly subscription of $49. Um, but you can, like I said, sign up in the uh, description. It's totally worth it. Um, this stuff should be getting sold for a lot more, but I'm making it available for really cheap. All right, and lastly, we got our your own mind. So um, obviously, the most important thing to remember when you're doing SEO is to focus on user experience optimization and user intent optimization. If your end goal is not to provide the best user experience for the intent of whatever people are searching is, then you're not going to end up winning. So disregard link building, disregard on-page SEO, disregard all that stuff. If you can't provide a good UX or a good enough UX for what people are searching for, they're not ever going to end up converting. And if they don't convert, then you're not making money. And if you're not making money, there's really no point in doing SEO. So if you want to know about how to do more of this stuff, I would really start, um, I would recommend you head over to my website, check out the different SEO courses I have available. I have a beginner to advanced SEO course, local SEO course, all, all the courses that basically describe how to do all the stuff that I've been talking about um, step by step. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Those are my top 10 SEO tools. I would love to hear from you guys what your top 10 SEO tools are. And that's it for today. So until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.